Hey everyone, welcome back to the Goth House. If you've been here before, if you're new, welcome. I'm so glad you're here. I'm Jenny and good Sunday morning to you. Today I am canning up that beef pot pie filling and I am gonna be using the ball recipe for pot roast in a jar. I've made this recipe for pot roast in a jar and it is good, but I want pot pie filling. So I'm gonna change up the, the flavor profile just a little bit. Um, but we are going to raw pack it just like the directions for this. I much prefer a raw packed beef stew or pot pie filling. Um, this is on, I don't know what page. Let me see. Um, <laughs> this is on page 275 of the all new ball book again, if you have this book. So again, we're gonna change up the flavors a little bit, but I'm still gonna use the beef, the onions, the celery, the carrots, and the potatoes. Let's get started. Okay, I've just brought my broth to a boil, and this is actually just filtered water and better than bouillon. Anytime I'm canning beef, I really like Worcestershire in it. So I'm gonna go ahead and put a little bit of, I'm gonna do three squirts of, three dashes of Worcestershire, Worcestershire, whatever you wanna call it. And then I am adding one teaspoon of onion powder to the broth. And I'm gonna add a half a teaspoon of garlic powder. I'm gonna taste this, make sure that there is enough flavor. I think it needs more better than bouillon. I'm gonna put a little bit more better than bouillon in there. I'm gonna put the top back on. I have 12 cups of uh, broth in here. I'm gonna turn this down to low. I don't know how much of it we're gonna use, but we shall find out. Okay, I've done my prep work and I have my six jars here. I have a pound of beef in each jar. I am going to add a bay leaf to each jar. Now this is pot pie mix, so I am actually not gonna add potatoes to this. Um, in the beef, in the beef um, recipe and for ball, it's like beef dinner. Um, they put potato in theirs, but I think I want um, to do potatoes. If I add them in my beef pot pie, I think I'd prefer to do them fresh. So, or I do have canned potatoes on the side, but I don't want to take up the room in my jar, jars with potatoes, because I'm funny like that. I'm gonna put some black pepper in here. Not a whole lot because I, black pepper gets really strong during canning. I learned that the hard way. Okay, I have that in. I am going to add a one teaspoon of kosher salt per jar. You don't have to add this much salt if you don't want to. The broth isn't real salty, so I normally don't put a lot of salt in, but I want my meat flavored too, so. The recipe does call for one, one um, teaspoon per jar also. We're gonna do some fresh garlic. 
We're gonna do one clove per jar. I'm just gonna crush it right in. Almost any time I use garlic, I use both fresh and powdered because they flavor in different ways. I've got some fresh thyme here, so I am just going to drop a few fresh thyme leaves in here. You can use dried thyme if you prefer. But I have some fresh, I actually prefer the, the fresh thyme. I'm probably using a quarter cup per jar. And carrots. Same thing, about a quarter cup per jar. Or a carrot per jar, perhaps. have celery. Again, probably about a, maybe a quarter cup per jar. Just kind of dividing them up. Okay, so my jars are probably three quarters of the way full of um, solids, and then I'm gonna put the beef broth in. All right, we just need one inch head space. bubble and my liquid is really hot so my canner is actually on low it's on warm anytime you have anything hot in your jar even though we're raw packing this is considered hot so make sure you know that your canner is warm I had that question pop up um, if you're raw packing is it still considered hot it is if you're putting in hot liquid This smells delicious. And I'm not putting any thickener in here. I have done that in the past and I actually prefer to thicken it, you know, when I'm gonna use it the day I'm gonna use it. Um, so I pour the contents of the jar out. Um, I make a slurry of cornstarch or ultra gel. I prefer ultra gel. And then, you know, and heat it up. And then um, I pour it into my dish or crust. A lot of times I do pot pies with crust only on the top.
Ball's recipe called for a cup of red wine. If you want to add red wine to your pot pie filling, you feel free. I like, I do like to add that sometimes. Um, today I'm just not, not feeling it. <laughs> and I don't stock a whole lot of red wine in here either. Um, I'll cook with it, but red wine uh, disagrees with me. really causes the uh, acid reflux to be in an uproar, so I rarely purchase it. I do just four recipes. All right, hopefully. My 12 cups, I got just enough for the next jar. Okay, so 12 cups of liquid for this recipe is perfect for a three quarter of the way full of solids. Make sure my jars are all the way to the to the one inch. Okay, perfect. I have a little bit of white vinegar. Now I don't put white vinegar in my canner. I just clean the rims with it. You know, and, and now that I'm thinking about it, when I used that new set of rims on the purr jars, rims, what am I talking about? <laughs> that new set of rings on the purr jars, they tarnished in one use. I did clean the rim with vinegar, but I didn't put it in the bath. So I don't know if that made a difference, but it never tarnishes my ball or my curr rings like that. Hear, can you hear the birds singing outside? I love that. <laughs> it's a beautiful morning. The birds are out there happily singing. Get these into my warm canner. Okay, everybody's in the hot tub. I'm gonna go ahead and process these guys one hour and 30 minutes. Okay, these guys are out of the canner and still bubbling away, of course. They're still hot, I just pulled them out. But it smells delicious. All right, folks, that's all there is to my beef pot pie filling and I love raw packing. I much prefer it and I think it makes it go faster and it's so if you haven't tried this method before, you should. Anyway folks, if you enjoyed the video, please give me a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed yet, please subscribe. It really helps me out a lot and I sure do appreciate your support. You can find me on Instagram at JennyGoff18. I'm also on Facebook and you can visit my blog for all of my recipes, including this one. Since I use the directions out of here but change the flavors up, I'm going to write what I use on my blog for you. Also, if you've got canning projects going on and you're on Instagram, don't forget to tag me at hashtag canningwithjenny. I love to see your projects. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.